Okay, Here we're we on. Sure. Three, two. All right, you're on Bruce. I'm one. on World. Okay. okay. Well, so Bruce, Bruce, so what's... Am I sound okay? Yeah. 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 What do you got to share with us tonight? Uh, amazing thing. Uh, what we've got is this. As you heard Charles Osman talking about collective action and this mass effects uh, yes. networks. Well, this is the uh, from about six six thousand feet up. The satellite image of switch the other channel. Collective. Hold on a second. Going, rolling, go. Okay, so Bruce, you, you were saying? That, um, as you heard Charles Osman talk about sort of mass collective actions in the net. Yes. And how that can create something greater, a much greater whole. Well, what we've got here, uh, which was taken on December 1st, it's a satellite image of the Alpha World cityscape. And this was... So this represents the collective works of how many people? 120,000 people. This not, is like 120,000 person city. Yeah, not not all of whom have been building. And remember, this is this is taken from several thousand feet up. If you're in the cityscape, it's a three-dimensional cityscape, and these these small lines there, the black lines, are all streets. Wow. And if you, I'll scroll up, uh, and I'll show you an airport just to give you an idea. I'll scroll this up. If you look in the upper right here, up here, yeah, that that's an airfield. Wow. That somebody go. This is an actual world you can zoom into. Huh? Yeah, you can go in. It's it's a three-dimensional world, but this is taken from over overhead. And this is a there's a ground zero. This is where it all started, right right about here. If you see the cursor, right there is this is ground zero. If I point it right, it's right here actually, where the mouse is. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. And you see that little wedge there? That yeah. that that's that's ground zero. Okay, good. Okay, Bruce, you've got five minutes to give us the tour. Now you we were just looking at Alpha World from space. Yeah, and here's a here's a a, a view of it from the ground and a wedding ceremony actually that happened in the environment earlier this year and this is a pavilion this would have been no more than a couple of pixels in that earlier picture very very little just uh, almost in just infinitesimally small and look through it and this uh hold on a sec This, for example, are avatars, and they're real motion. This is just a still, a waiting for the wedding guests to arrive. And this pavilion was built by a, a woman from Louisiana who designs and builds areas. So she actually just put this all together: these trees, and a lot of other a lot of other parts of the pavilion. And they had a ceremony in here where two people were married that were separated by about 3,000 miles. Take so, the, so they actually took their vows? And they, they took, took their vows they took, took the vows and... Yeah. That's alright, that doesn't matter. On that. Okay. So we'll just bring that up here. Yeah, they took their vows and it was the first time it was done in a virtual world these aren't virtual reality systems. They're not. You don't wear goggles. They're things that you see on the screen in, th in 3D in a window, and you immerse yourself by using your own mental models. And and for instance, I was a photographer at this wedding, and here's the uh, the the groom, and here's the bride, and they were moving. I mean, a second later, they would have been moved out of position. This is a three-dimensional world. This is looking through my eyes as a little kid photographer and this is the uh, the priest here saying for richer or poorer as long as you both shall live etc and there are about 200 people Dad here man for or poorer. Dad a man. so this is just a, a small fragment of life in a virtual city somewhat like Neil Stevenson's metaverse in Snow Crash and 
that the satellite image you saw earlier was this vast overview of what has been constructed and it doesn't show you the, the social cultural things that have been going on with 100,000 people um, so it's a tremendous phenomenon and f for the, the fact that it's happening in 1996 is just amazing and what it, about 97? What's your prediction there? oh just continued growth there's about 350,000 users now using things like this avatar worlds and probably probably top about a million users and um, I think it, it appeals it doesn't appeal to the whole internet population but it's a brand new when you have spoken word avatar worlds it's a it makes the internet more accessible to a lot of people who who don't find web pages that interesting yeah, this so audio is the, uh, one of the key apps. Vo yeah their own voice the ability to customize make their own face and to represent themselves to the world and to other avatars, people in avatars. Avatars are going to be it for a long time because the, the pipes aren't aren't thick enough, aren't wide enough to carry video for many, many years, especially from the home. So avatars are going to make do for people's personae. Oh, so so um, any, any avatar sites where we can really check out what kind of avatars we can have? Yeah, there's... Uh, well, on our site, www.ccon.org, you've got uh, tons and tons of, of links to worlds because we're uh, an organization that focuses on avatar th two- and three-dimensional worlds. But this is a part of the site. It's the solar system of worlds. And one of the newest is this exciting on-live traveler, which has giant talking heads and uh, with your own voice coming out. So this and is start taking advantage of the audio. Yeah, and you can have 16 people talking at w once. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, for instance, here's here's a you know an avatar wolf, and the mouth will move uh, with the voice or do vowel recognition and, and move the shape of the mouth. And there's facial gestures and blinking that happen, so it looks like a real a real thing. You feel like you're there talking with a person in this kind of Mardi Gras mask. <laughs> so, but these people are moving around talking. You can hear the voice get louder as you get closer to them. So it, it's it's quite a phenomenal thing to happen on a home computer on a modem that yeah. this this is possible, and hear lots of conversations and and you've got a 3D virtual world going on that's quite large and you can travel to MTV's world and you know, what would you like to see happen? Um, that basically perhaps a recognition that this is a fundamental change for cyberspace that it's maybe a return the internet's getting over this web thing which is all a great big billboard a big advertisement and it's getting back to connecting people because the web's certainly gotten in the way of that in the last few years um, and that in, in a world like this that you're able to build your own place easily and talk I think that that, that would be a, just a wonderful application merging alpha world with this having both technologies supported yeah because then the, you know, the, you, know you don't when you look at web pages, people talk about visiting web pages. I never think of it in those terms. It's just a document. I'm bringing up a document. I'm not visiting anywhere. Yeah, and this this spot, I mean, you're, you're in there with people, and they're doing stuff. They're banging your head. If they're teenage headbangers, they're doing music. They're, they're doing sumo wrestling in the sumo wrestling in the sportsplex. They're building their homes or their creations. They're putting art on the walls. And, and it's 3D, and you sort of this dynamics alive. It's never the same twice. Uh, you you meet the same people in there, and it really feels like a place. So it's the whole idea of creating space, creating places that become more and more real, and which we want to spend time. In. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's really a social. Uh, social it's thing. social. It's not shoot 'em up. It's not doom. Right. It it really doesn't appeal to the Find doom crowd. And yeah, and and, and you're. You're not dealing with any proxy. You're not sending them an email. You're not typing, just typing text or doing a web page or posting to a news group. You are seeing a face that is talking to you out of cyberspace, and and in in somebody's voice in real time as as you're 
sitting there or a baby sucking on a microphone or a kid screaming into a microphone and because they can see that they're they're in this carnival or in this theater or the virtual but it's it's they're in and they're in a shared place and that's the real revolution of this is you're you're meeting in a spot that doesn't exist in anywhere in the galaxy except in bits but, but it gets the illusion that it's uh, a real space real space which of course you know maybe our brains maybe the real world around us is our illusion that this room is is here i mean we're just getting bits optically reflected off of the walls and yeah. So what is real? It's our cognitive process. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, existentialism versus whatever else, but realism. So you want to ultimately put your consciousness in the silicon? Oh, I don't think that's even a. That's not even a. That's a question that has to be broken down into fifty million parts. And what we're really asking you is, do you want a cranial jack? Well, in a sense. Uh, Everything's a cranial jack. Um, RL and V virtual worlds are. Um, this de this is very exhausting, mentally. Very very exhausting activity compared to just net surfing. It's it's definitely different. Yeah, I mean this is a whole different thing. You're you're in a space. You're trying to make sure you don't bump people. People are talking at you. Your your all your social neurons are firing. All your spatial body maneuvering neurons are firing. It's um, so when you're in these virtual worlds, it's a lot more load on on a person to operate and navigate there. A, a friend of mine talks who goes up in the shuttle talks about this is like orbital syndrome because when you're in orbit and you're outside on the man maneuvering unit, you're maneuvering around. You've you've got to know where your body is at all times and you're reacting against being bumped and and it's very exhausting and when you're moving an avatar around in a 3d world you're sort of conscious you have to be conscious of you're going to clobber somebody so it's kind of like orbital syndrome in a way well i'm digi gardener in 15 different virtual worlds um I'm, yeah i'm writing a book on this i took the the dubious uh, ridiculous task of trying to document this medium as it and create the first book and it's getting done but the worlds change every every second so, so you, can time. you can just take a mark in time that's right and somebody has to tell the story of this incredible thing that's occurring you know somebody has to document this and it isn't being covered yet it's it's like the World Wide Web and Mosaic in '93 before it became before it went out of universities, but this this revolution isn't starting in universities or labs or anything. It's starting in people's homes, from home, their bedroom, computer, or whatever, from the living room. It's the it's ordinary people, postmen, people working chocolate factories, people who bind magazines at a printing plant. These are the kinds of people who are using these worlds. Yeah, it's it's very grassroots. It's um, it's being missed by you know the, the kind of highfalutin laboratory people are missing this revolution because it's not occurring there. It's occurring in the hands of just regular computer users, which is nice, I think. And, and if you want, to, where would people start initially? At the ccon.org site, where you have the list. Yeah, the virtual worlds. If they want a simple world, it's two dimensional. Uh, Palace. It runs on a Mac and a PC. If they want 3D, they should start at World's Chat. Or if they want the voice and they got the sound card and the mic and speakers, go all the way to online. On live, um, Alpha World. If they want to build a homestead, digital homestead, and leave their mark in there. So, them yeah, kinds of your, things. Name your book. Avatars. Surprisingly. All right. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So that's that's an exhausting '96 a conference. It's getting this. Uh, yeah, which uh, book and the organization's growing and the membership and and the virtual worlds are exploding and and we're just getting ready for '97 when this medium really gets gets recognized probably by the mainstream media as being a, the next wave coming over the net. You know, once we're finished all the Java and the and you know the web just the web page stuff yeah and people 
people's as Pavel Curtis says, people are the killer app of the nineties. 